So we're walking out onto a frozen lake. So we are going to go out here and look for some pockets of methane gas trapped in the lake ice. Katie Walter Anthony is a researcher with the University of Alaska in Fairbanks. She wanted to show us a phenomenon that could have dramatic repercussions for our changing climate. The methane is here because the permafrost is thawing. And when it thaws, there are microbes in the bottom of the lake that uh, eat the carbon that was in the permafrost and they make methane gas. One molecule of methane is, 20, is like 25 molecules of carbon dioxide, so it, it's a really strong greenhouse gas. And methane is contributing to climate warming and making uh, the warming that's already happening worse. So get down low. Okay. And as soon as I put this in, as, yeah. as soon as I break through, gas will rush out, and you want to basically get it right down right the Right above the hole. Stream. Okay. Ready? Boy! Holy crap. That burned me. <laughs> what? You okay? Yep. Wow. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I didn't expect it to you be that powerful. You might burn all your hair and beard today. <laughs> Woo. And this is a, a fairly recent discovery. Yeah. There's two times as much carbon in the frozen ground as there is in the atmosphere. Whoa. <laughs> wow. A large part of that carbon can be released and, and add more carbon dioxide and methane to the atmosphere, making climate warming even worse than we expect. If you break through, don't pull your spear out right away. Leave it in there till I get my torch over. Okay. That was pretty good. So there are millions of lakes like this now, and there are probably going to be millions more. That's right. In the not too distant future. So all you can do is, is keep it underground. There's nothing else you can do to mitigate this. If we can slow down climate warming, it will slow down permafrost thaw, which will cause less of a temperature increase. If we speed up climate warming and permafrost flash thaws, then we will have a huge pulse of greenhouse gases, especially methane going into the atmosphere that will cause a really abrupt warming. There's more carbon locked in the permafrost than humans have released into the atmosphere since the beginning of the industrial age, and it has already started to thaw. To understand just how profound the impact could be, we went to NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab, where Dr. Charles Miller showed us some dire projections. Just from thaw-induced carbon release, the amount of temperature change could be as high as a full degree or more. And then when you couple that in to the fully um, coupled climate models, it's projecting out somewhere in the neighborhood of four to five degrees C temperature change. Other models that I've seen definitely show eight to 10 degree changes in the Arctic by the 2100 timeframe. What would the planet look like with temperature rises of eight or nine degrees? Eight degrees, 10 degrees uh, type of temperature change may well take us into a tropical type of Earth, even um, in the mid to upper latitudes, just something dramatically different that none of us have ever experienced. So really, the, the entire world ought to be focused on keeping this carbon within the ground there. That would be uh, something that would be admirable, but I think we're already on a path to releasing a significant fraction of this carbon. Because of its size and location, one country where permafrost thaw is a major problem is Russia. And because nearly 70% of the country's landmass is permafrost, Russian scientists are also at the forefront of the search for solutions. We went to Siberia, where the effects of the thawing permafrost are plain to see. This is the beginning of our main highway. In the past, hundreds of big trucks drive with big speed in this road. The road is not used anymore now? No, it's impossible. Next year, this road will disappear. Behind us, they surround 60 meters of ice. This big depression appeared because this ice melted. And now, lake located in this depression. This lake is new. In your lifetime? Yes. Sergei Zimov has been studying the Arctic landscape for over 30 years. He's seen firsthand how permafrost is thawing under a changing climate. Let's go to the basement of permafrost. Zimov and his team have dug a series of tunnels to study permafrost, the vast frozen layer of soil, ice, and organic matter that covers 24% of the Northern Hemisphere and can extend to depths of 5,000 feet. 
So look at this. This is pretty much just pure ice, almost. But it's, it's permafrost. And we're not even that deep underground. We're, I don't know, 10 feet underground. And from above, you'd never guess it was this cold. You can see here, there's a lot of living microbes preserved in this permafrost. There was ice wedges. It's part of ice wedges. Do you see it's ice? But when this permafrost melt, ice convert to the water, water go away, and surface drop. This erosion appeared just last year. Is, is this all permafrost underneath us, everything? Everywhere. Yeah. Ice is half of volume. Therefore, if it's 55 meters of permafrost, after melting of ice, it will be 22 meters less. Do you understand 22 meters? Yeah. yeah. And to illustrate this, researchers took us to one of the most stunning examples of permafrost thaw in the world. They're taking us to see what they call a slump, which is when the permafrost and the ice have thawed or melted so much that the ground has collapsed. Locals call it the gateway to the underworld. But over half a mile wide and 300 feet deep, this crater is the largest of its kind, caused by permafrost thaw. Oh, yeah. This is solid ice. Just like you can see on that huge wall. So when you walk down into the slump, you end up facing an almost kilometer-wide wall of permafrost. And it almost sounds like it's alive, because everywhere there are bits splintering, breaking and falling down. And even that, that stream, that running water, that's, that's water, just water coming from, from the melting ice and the thawing permafrost. As the exposed permafrost continues to thaw, the crater keeps getting bigger, expanding 60 feet every year. Do you think this is a warning sign? Do you think you could see many more of these in the, in the not too distant future? This is действительно предупреждение. Есть мы считаем, что именно с этого времени начались именно такие резкие изменения. I could easily imagine seeing this. What would happen if, if you know, a piece of land that had a town on top of it were to go like this? Он имел все шансы уйти под землю. Самая главная опасность в том, что такие процессы остановить нельзя. There's a huge crack behind us. This, this makes me nervous. This, is, this feels very precarious. That, 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 feels that, like that. it's about to go. <laughs> As more and more permafrost thaws and the ground falls away, carbon that was frozen in the permafrost is released into the atmosphere. On a mass scale, this process can accelerate climate change. The solution is urgently needed. If we don't do this, what is the price we will pay when all of these gases are released? You will die. Maybe not you, but no chance for your grandchildren. But Sergei Zimov has a plan to keep the ground frozen. He took us along the Kolyma River to a site that might just prove we can break the cycle. Zimov is gathering animals here, animals that will transform the landscape from forest back into grassland, which he says is much better at preserving the permafrost. Before people occupied our planet, density of forests in our planet was 10 times less. Because everywhere was millions, millions of animals, and animals did control for vegetation. What does that do to the permafrost? In the place where there's no animals, soil might be minus 15. In place where it's grazing, soil minus 35. Therefore, in the winter, soil freeze much, much deep. And just having animals grazing here is enough, enough for that difference in temperature? Yes, because this ecosystem has a huge army of big soldiers yeah. which fight with any shrubs, any trees. This bison, his best hobby is to, to kill trees and shrubs. The animals trample the vegetation, which leaves the ground more exposed to the cold, keeping the permafrost frozen. Plus, while forest is dark, grass is light, and the lighter the surface, the more heat from the sun is reflected back to space. It's a simple idea. 
I not build something new. I only combine the pieces which was one organism. Just take it back to what it was thousands yes. of years ago. To prove his theory, Zimov and his team are rounding up animals from across Siberia to populate his park. While the reindeer help, in order to fully restore this land to its prehistoric state, it will take some prehistoric wildlife. You've shown us some of the animals that you've brought back. Um, there's also been talk about bringing back the woolly mammoths. Without elephants, Pashi ecosystem can occupy maybe only 60% of territory in Siberia. With mammoths, it will be 95% of territory. So really, you need a mammoth or something like it for it to be complete? Yes. This might sound far-fetched, but scientists at the Institute of Applied Ecology are working on this very idea. Ironically, the solution to this problem might also have been frozen in permafrost. Это хобот малоляховского мамонта, которого мы раскопали в 2013 году. And do you know how old this is? Да, этот мамонт упал в яму с водой, вода замерзла, с тех пор не оттаяла. И когда мы стали отбирать образцы, увидели, что там прямо красное мясо. This sample could provide the genetic material needed to bring the mammoth back. So they're now um, taking samples from all over the trunk to try and find the most perfectly preserved DNA, which could then potentially be used for a clone. But do you think, for example, in your lifetime or in the next 10 years, we could actually see living, breathing woolly mammoth? Если получится все у нас, да, мы можем получить хоть сто клонов малоляховского мамонта. Мы надеемся, что может дать толчок к, к обратной трансформации моховых тундр, некое подобие тун, бывших тундр степей perhaps even uh, ice age flora and fauna, plants and animals, allowing nature to basically heal itself. That winds up generally being the fastest and most efficient way to restore the previous landscape, ecosystems, biodiversity, and climate. There is chance mammoths will appear just in a few years. Maybe it will not mammoths, maybe it will be elephants where people take a piece of genome and put small pieces from mammoths. My responsibility, I must prepare pasture for these animals. If the ancient Arctic ecosystem can be restored using geoengineering, Sergei would have demonstrated a viable solution to halt the threat of permafrost thaw.